Okay, good afternoon. This is Mandy Gunasegura. I'm the Chief of Staff at US EPA. I will be emceeing today's press conference, so thank you very much for joining for this important clean air announcement. Just a reminder to any other reporters or folks from the press community that have joined us for the press call that will follow immediately after this conference, go ahead and dial in to that line separately. You should have received that information in the event you have not, please email press at epa.gov to receive that information. So with that, I will now turn things over to Administrator of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, Andrew Wheeler. Thank you, Mandy, and thank you everyone for joining. Today, the U.S. EPA is announcing a final decision to retain the existing National Ambient Air Quality Standards, or NAAQS, for particular pollution, PM, with no changes. I am joined today on this call with Governor Justice from West Virginia, and I apologize that I cannot be there in person today. I was really looking forward to being in Charleston for this announcement. This is a great time for, for West Virginia and a great time for air quality in West Virginia. Just in October, we redesignated the final non-attainment area in the state of West Virginia, Marshall County, for sulfur dioxide which means for the first time since 1978, the entire state of West Virginia is attaining the air quality standards for all six criteria air pollutants. So I was really hoping to be in Charleston today to, to honor that achievement. I wanna thank Governor Justice and uh, Environmental Director Caperton for all of their hard work, as well as the hard work at the local and county level as well, in order to reach attainment across the board. And I'm very pleased that they are on the call today to join me in announcing our new standards for particulate matter. This decision, which applies to both fine and coarse particulate matter, comes after careful review of the most recent available scientific evidence and retains the standards that were set by the Obama-Biden administration. It also comes after consultation with the agency's independent scientific advisors in consideration of more than 60,000 public comments on the proposal. We also held five public meetings. With this action, EPA is following the principles established in the earliest days of this administration to streamline the NAAQS review process and fulfill our statutory obligation to complete NAAQS reviews within the five-year time frame laid out in the Clean Air Act. During the first three years of the Trump administration, particulate matter concentrations have decreased across the nation, including a 7% reduction of fine particulate matter or PM 2.5, while our economy grew at a tremendous rate. In May of 2018, EPA issued a back to basics memo to improve EPA's process for reviewing the NACs. This memo laid out goals to get EPA back on track with Clean Air Act requirements, statutory deadlines, and the issuance of timely implementation rules. By applying these principles, EPA was able to issue the final PM standards earlier than initially anticipated, and the agency expects to meet the five-year review deadlines moving forward for all of the NAAQS reviews. As a result of Clean Air Act programs and efforts by state, local, and tribal governments, average annual PM 2.5 concentrations in the United States fell by 43% between 2000 and 2019. Average PM 10 concentrations fell by 46% during the same period. In addition, since 2017, the agency has redesignated 56 non-attainment areas as in attainment, which is a testament to the good health that people are having across the country from air. It also helps these communities economically. The U.S. now has some of the lowest fine particulate matter levels in the world, five times below the global average, six times below the average in China, and lower than the PM levels in France, Germany, and the U.K. Exposure to fine particulate pollution has improved significantly 
for people with low socioeconomic status living in monitored counties. Based on the most recent monitoring data, over 80% of that population is breathing air that meets EPA's 2012 annual or 2006 24 hour PM 2.5 standards compared to only 43% of the population as of 2008. The NACs for particulate pollution include standards for fine particulate PM 2.5 and standards for coarse PM 10. For fine particulates, the standards levels being retained are two standards to protect against adverse health effects, known as the primary standards, an annual standard of 12 micrograms per cubic meter, and the 24-hour standard of 35 micrograms per cubic meter. Two standards to protect against adverse welfare effects, known as the secondary standards, and those standards for fine particles are an annual PM 2.5 standard of 15 micrograms per cubic meter and a 24-hour PM 2.5 standard of 35 micrograms per cubic meter. And for coarse particles, EPA is retaining both the primary and secondary standards. It's worth repeating that the Clean Air Act requires the EPA to review the national air quality standards every five years to determine whether they should be retained or revised. And that, quite frankly, has not been happening. The process that we had developed over the years was taking on average seven to eight years. By issuing our Back to Basics memo in 2018, we put the agency back on track to follow the law and get these reviews done in a five-year time period. EPA has regulated particle pollution since 1971 and has only revised the standards four times the last time in 2012. And this will be the fifth time because the timely implementation of the rule is a core responsibility for EPA as it continues its mission to protect public health and the environment. And that is what we are delivering on today. I wanna to thank you all, everyone for your time. Before I turn it back over to Mandy, just to re recap, this is five-year review. That means the next five-year review starts tomorrow. I know there's been questions. I'll just head off those questions before we get to the press call about various articles that have come out this year. Those articles did not come out in time for this five-year review process, but they will be included in the next five-year review process. Congress envisioned a rolling review of the science behind the NACs with a stop every five years to assess whether or not the standards need to be changed. And that's what we've gotten back on track doing for the first time in a generation. With that, I'll turn it back over to Mandy. Okay, thank you, Administrator. We will now turn things over to the Governor of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Governor? Well, first and foremost, let me just say this. A million trillion congratulations to Administrator Wheeler. And of course, I know him as Andrew, but really and truly, what an incredible job you've done. You know, uh, the same number of congratulations to, to Austin Caperton, who's our secretary of our DEP. You know, he has done, he has done amazing work and, and it just, I can't tell you how happy that I am. I mean, when you just really just step back and think about it, West Virginia forever has been known as a dingy and dark state and dusty and with problems and, and all kinds of issues. For us to absolutely achieve in October, you know, that the entire state was officially meeting the EPA's National Ambient Air Quality Standards for the first time since 1978 is an accomplishment of a lot, a lot of great people that have really worked terribly hard at this. Now, from my standpoint, I always know that West Virginia has the most pristine air that, you know, that has, has absolutely the most pristine waters. And we only want goodness and goodness and goodness to continue in West Virginia. But when you step back and you just think about it, you know, as the days ahead, everyone is starting really to pick up on the fact that maybe just maybe West Virginia is the diamond in the rough that we all miss. A state that abounds in the most beautiful seasons under the sun 
and a state that is absolutely ro located within a rock throw of two thirds of the population of the country. You know, it truly is a real treasure, but we needed so badly, so badly to get in step with where we should have been with EPA. So absolutely, this, this is an incredible day. I absolutely, you know, salute Andrew for all your great work, the Trump administration for all their great work, your predecessors, all the people that have contributed and all the hard work that our people have put in here, especially Austin. You know, he's a great friend, he's an incredible resource and what a job he's done. But if you really just step back and think about it, you think about how business and the economy can thrive and can thrive in the most pristine and clean ways. You know, just think about what we have done in the United States. And Andrew mentioned it, five times lower than the global average, six times lower than China. Absolutely, it is amazing. Amazing is what we've been able to achieve by goodness with a thriving, vibrant economy and absolutely with two sides working together. So again, you know, whether it be the environmental community or it be the business community, at some point in time, whether it be Republicans or whether it be Democrats, at some point in time, we're going to realize on this earth that we can work together, we exist together, and we can have goodness beyond belief. And the only thing I want to apologize for is we had, we had a little malfunction as far as, you know, the virtual, the Zoom part of this whole thing and everything. And so from the standpoint of video, I'm sorry that we, we couldn't get all that put together. But again, Andrew and Austin and all the players to be, you know, many congratulations. Way to go. It's great, a great, great day in West Virginia. And so I couldn't be any more proud. Really good stuff. Thank you, Governor. I really appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will move on to our next speaker, which is Congressman Mooney. Congressman, are you on? You may be muted. We'll give them just a second. Okay, we can always come back to you, Congressman. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to the Secretary of West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection, Austin Caperton. Well, thank you very much. It's pretty hard to top what the governor said. Um, I will say that all of these things that happen only happen because you have boots on the ground that do the permitting, enforcing, and inspecting. And I could not be prouder of the DEP. The governor gave me this amazing job with this amazing staff. Um, I have this little button that I carry here that says DEP, and it stands for Driven by Employee Pride. And boy, they have it. And I hope they're just beaming today. It's our air quality group I would put up against any group in the country. It's uh, led by a lady named Laura Crowder, who is a superstar. And I thank all the DEP folks for making it so that I don't have to do that much work. And uh, thank you, Administrator Wheeler. And thank you, Governor Justice. I really appreciate the opportunity to, been, to have been involved in this. Okay, thank you very much. Thank I you. will, I'll go back and see if uh, Congressman Mooney has been able to join yet. I'm not yet seeing any movement on um, his feed. So we will hear from the Senior Deputy Attorney General, Douglas Buffington. Thank you, Administrator Wheeler, Governor Justice, and esteemed colleagues for the opportunity to speak here today. And more importantly, thank you for giving us all a reason to be here. I'm very happy to be a part of this announcement because it represents a big win for West Virginia coal. But just as importantly, the rule announced today shows us how these big wins don't have to come at the expense of health and safety. As indicated, I'm the Senior Deputy Attorney General serving under Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. 
Our team has spent eight years in the trenches fighting for West Virginia coal and for American energy. We've had some big wins in court. Whether it's stopping Obama's unlawful and destructive clean power plan at the Supreme Court or blocking lower courts from freezing all energy infrastructure development nationwide, we have had a great track record of stopping overreach in its tracks. We've also had great victories like the one we're here to discuss today. Victories that are only possible when you have reasonable and understanding leadership in the federal government. Our team has been able to work collaboratively with the EPA these past four years and help develop a lot of great policies like the Affordable Clean Energy Rule. Of course, we're far from alone in this process. Administrator Wheeler deserves a lot of credit for creating an atmosphere and culture that allows for affected groups like West Virginia to really be heard. No matter if you're talking about a collaborative rulemaking process or a pitch court battle, the criticism we face from our opponents is always the same that because we care about protecting coal jobs, we must not care about the environment or other people's health. Today's rule shows why that charge is completely ridiculous. Yes, the uh, air standards rules have been tightened. Uh, it could have, if they had been tightened, it could have been a huge blow to the coal industry. These standards have been in place for years, decades in some cases. Upsetting baseline rules like these could have force the extreme and costly disruptive restructuring of the industry. But today's rule wasn't arrived at because the cost of changing the air quality standards. Rather, the EPA asked the simpler question of whether there was any reason to change these standards in the first place. EPA conducted a pure and direct environment review, just like the Clean, Act Air, Clean Air Act calls for, and concluded that there would be no health or safety benefits to departing from the existing standards. Put simply, EPA's analysis showed that it is possible to protect the environment without throwing the coal industry into limbo. It's possible to support coal and support reasonable health and safe safety standards. People who hate coal don't want to acknowledge that. They simply want black and white issues that leave no room for nuance. We see this dynamic playing out time and again. The Trump administration sets rules that protect the environment and respect the statutory limits on EPA authority. Uh, but critics still demand more. And time and again, these demands aren't based on any deficiency in the rules themselves. Our opponents simply object to rules that don't push coal and other fossil fuels totally out of business. Because that is their goal at the end of the day, not protecting health and safety. It's clearest to see here, where we've been operating under perfectly good standards for years and no reliable evidence shows that tighter restrictions would be helpful but it is a constant mistake from those who reflexively call for ever tightening restrictions. They see, they see regulation as an end unto itself and miss seeing the forest from the trees. So again, on behalf of my office and all West Virginians, I wanna say thank you to Administrator Wheeler for showing us yet again that evidence-based regulations can protect the environment and still leave room for industries to thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Douglas, I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Um, we are, we just got word that Congressman Mooney is walking back from votes. I just wanna check and see if he has made it back to his, his office yet. He should be back any minute from votes. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, um, as the job sometimes falls to the MC, I'll try to fill just a little bit while hopefully he gets in. Um, I would just say thank you to West Virginia. They've certainly been great partners throughout all of this. Um, certainly uh, in, in a range of environmental actions we've taken here at the agency. And so it's great to have this press conference and to have you all join us today. Um, with that, I will see Congressman, have you joined us? Okay, he may have been held up. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. I know we are about one minute away from launching the Q&A portion of the press call. So if you are from the communications um, realm, is that Congressman? Oh, there we go, just in time. <laughs> Look, I, I know most has probably already been said, but today's announcement by the EPA of the finalization of the National Ambient Air Quality Standards is a big win for West Virginia. This rule balances cleaner environment with the needs for continued economic development. 
in West Virginia and really all around the country. This is a huge win. And I, and I thank the president and Secretary Wheeler for doing this today. It's really important that we got this done. I know you've been working on it for a long time. Under President Trump's leadership, America has cleaner air, energy independent, and West Virginia can continue to serve as a backbone for our nation's energy production. I don't have to give a big speech. I know a lot was said. Thanks for uh, accommodating me. I just ran back from the Capitol from voting today and uh, God bless your good work. Congressman, thank you very much and thank you for joining us and I appreciate your words. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Uh, and just in time, really appreciate you coming back. With that, we will wrap up today's conference call. Um, we will now be switching to the Q&A portion. If you're a reporter or from the press community, you should have that information. Please dial in and we will close down this line and reconnect on the other. Thank you.